What the hell is that? A jack-o'-lantern? Why is this out here? What the hell is that? back to gas mask 360 this is the halloween special now i know it's been a little while but you know sometimes things in life you know they they take a they take a different turn than what you planned not everything goes the way you think and we just gotta adjust sometimes so i've missed you guys and i'm not gone I'm still here, so you'll still see more of me, don't worry. Anyways guys, in today's video, I thought in the spirit of Halloween, I would go over my favorite to least favorite Halloween movies, the Halloween series to be specific. I believe there are 13 of those now which is pretty crazy to wrap my head around. Um, I guess technically 12, um, in terms of which ones have Michael Myers in them. There's one that doesn't, but we'll get to that. So starting from the bottom, going up. At the bottom of this list, number 13, I'm going to have to give that to Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, Electric Boogaloo. Now, I am fairly familiar with Rob Zombie's work, and I gotta be honest, I'm just not a fan of the style. I'm sure the guy's great, but I'm just not a fan of his horror films. They're just, they're, they're too... They're too down in the muck. They're too grimy. They're too dirty for me. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 is like a whole other deal. <laughs> um, everything from Michael Talkin, which is a travesty, complete character assassination, shame on you, to, you know, just dead relatives and magic horses like come on man you're better than that or maybe you're not i don't know but yeah rob zombies halloween 2 it's just i didn't even watch the movie that's how bad it is but i know enough about it to know i'd hate it so that's why it's at the bottom so next up is well Rob Zombie's Halloween 1, where, again, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit too dirty, a bit too much in the muck for me. Um, number one, no one, I won't say no one, but no one wants to see Michael as a kid. You get to see enough of that in the original movie. We don't need to see Michael come from a troubled home, uh, have, a, have a troubled upbringing, and have hillbilly hick parents and him get bullied as a child. And it's just like, oh, well, it's perfect. it makes perfect sense why he became Michael Myers that we know today. Um, sure, for like some other slasher, go for it. Uh, that's not Michael, though. Um, and then, like, the second half of the movie is basically his own version of the first movie. And I'm just like, you, you can't beat the original, man. Why try? Why try? So anyways, yeah, Rob Zombie's two Halloween films are down to the very bottom of the list for me. I kind of felt like leaving them off the list. That's just how much I don't care about them. But they're Halloween films, so I, I gotta put them on here. So I would say after that... 
I would go with... You see, I want to say... I want to say Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, uh, is number 10. Or number 11, I'm sorry. Um... I don't dislike that movie. It's just not a traditional Halloween movie. It's kind of it's it, it's it's the one that doesn't have Michael Myers in it at all, unless you want to count like someone watching the first Halloween on a TV screen in the movie. So I guess he's technically in it as a cameo. But it was a uh, it was when they tried to make these Halloween movies an anthology series, and. This movie got slammed really hard because, well, Michael's not in it. It's not about Michael Myers, so why bother? The movie has, has gained quite the cult following over the years. And just looking at the movie for what it is, I think it's, I think it's perfectly fine. Um, but it is technically a Halloween movie in this series. So, yeah... I think I'll I think I'll still leave it at uh, at number eleven. Moving on to number ten, gonna have to give that to Halloween Six, The Curse of Michael Myers. See, this is this is another one of the Halloween films that really tried to dive into the mystery and the supernatural element of Michael Myers and try to kind of explain how he ticks, why he, why he kills, and all this kind of stuff. But they just, they just overdo it. They just, they just go really overboard and really silly and, and weird with it. Um, I, I mean, they, they, they try and be clever to an extent and, and play into where Halloween kind of came from as you know, ancient traditions way back when. Um, and it's just like, there's this cult that worships Michael Myers and they curse children and they get this mark of the thorn on their, like, wrist or something and they just become evil and start killing people, uh, specifically members of their family. Like, they just start wiping out their bloodline because that's the plot they went with at that time. So yeah, that 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 was that was something they started back in Halloween two, the original Halloween two, um, when they made it where Michael and the main character at the time, Lori Strode, uh, were brother and sister, and so he was going after her because she's his sister. And, uh, yeah, just that's what they went with at that time. So, next up is Halloween 5. The uh, Revenge of Michael Myers. So, first things first. They use different masks in like every movie for one reason or another um outside of i think this most recent trilogy where i think they just kept altering the same mask or they just had multiple of the same mask i don't know um but for whatever reason after the first movie like they lost the mask or something and so they had to like make like poor replicas and like, they've just never really been that great since. And Halloween 5 definitely suffers in that department. The mask isn't great, by any means. Um, I mean, the mask isn't that great in in uh, The Curse of Michael Myers either, or in several of these movies. But, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Um, other than that, it's just like, it kind of, it kind of takes a dump on the ending of Halloween 4, which serves as a pretty cool end to the, 
to this timeline, but they they kept going, so we had to we had to we had to keep bringing Michael Myers back. Uh, both both has its strong points and its drawbacks, but mainly drawbacks just to how they usually tend to bring him back, and it's just not super interesting. But yeah, the, the Revenge of Michael Myers, they have this whole uh, man in black plot line. It's like this mysterious guy who just wears like all black, a black cowboy hat, black cowboy boots. Uh, you rarely ever see this guy, but uh, he pops up every now and again. And then you, you're given the impression that he's like kind of helping Michael Myers out in his own way. And they they expand more on that and, and the curse of Michael Myers where they dive into all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> and it's just dumb. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they kill off a lot of the really good characters from from the fourth Halloween movie in, in silly, dumb ways. And yeah, the, the movie's ending is pretty silly. Uh, Michael gets broken out of the prison he gets sent to and uh doc dr loomis who's a character who's been around for a while um <laughs> seemingly dies in this movie but they they like bringing his character back too they, they, they kind of like having trying to have dr loomis's character who's been around since the original movie they kind of like putting him in scenarios where he potentially dies with Michael Myers in several of these movies or potentially dies beating Michael Myers. And they always bring him back like like him and Michael always come back and they kind of they kind of do a weird thing with that. And in, in, in the curse of Michael Myers as well, where the evil uh, Mark of the Thorn transfers to him in one of the endings. And it's really weird. <laughs> it's really silly. Um, but rest in peace to that actor. He, uh, he, he died, like, I think, like, right after they stopped, uh, filming, right after they got done filming The Curse of Michael Myers. Uh, but he was a trooper. He was definitely the best actor they had, um, at the time. But, uh, he was always, he was always fun to, to have around. So, yeah, after that, I would say would be Halloween H2O, which is, was made 20 years after the original movie. So yeah, Halloween 20 years later, um, I think kind of exists in its own, like a lot of these movies kind of exist in their own kind of timeline. They all use outside of Rob Zombie's movies, which are just a complete reboot, a complete retelling. Uh, most of these other movies at least use the first movie as a the original movie as a base and then build from it going from there and i can't recall if halloween h2o incorporates the original halloween 2 or if it just counts the first movie and then you just jump 20 years into the future or whatever but um yeah halloween h2o isn't a bad movie <sighs> but it kind of is <laughs> Because I think it's boring. <laughs> and a boring movie is a bad movie, in my opinion. So, it, it's got some okay kills, but overall, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't even really feel like a Halloween movie. Like, it's just like the tone and the atmosphere is all different. Like, instead of being in, like, the town of Hattonfield, where most of these movies take place... They're off in, like, a completely different part of the country, like, in California or something, on, like, a college or high school campus. And, uh, it all kind of builds up to this final battle between, uh, the original main actress, um, character of Laurie Strode and Michael, and they have a final throwdown. And, uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty wacky fight. It's a pretty, uh, action movie fight. So it's pretty silly for a, for a Halloween movie. Um, like, more silly than most of their fights. And uh, she ends up uh, pinning him to a tree with a car. 
and chops his head off with an axe, so she wins. She did it. And to a lot of people, that uh, that's the perfect ending uh, to the Halloween series. Um, but overall, the movie just... The tone, the tone was very off, and, and the fight is pretty over-the-top silly, which isn't always a bad thing, but for a pretty boring movie up to that point, I just, I don't think it really worked out. But hey, they also agree, because, um, you gotta, you gotta keep making more, <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to that. So, I believe up next... I would say mm, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head. Um, I, I had a pretty good order off in my head, but I'm still kind of doing this off the top of my head. So, you know, raw content. We're doing it raw, boys. Um, I would probably give the next one to Halloween ends yeah so so the latest the latest movie in the halloween series to come out halloween ends um which isn't a bad movie in my opinion um it's just they they took a lot of risks a lot of big risks and where they decided to go with the story and i don't think it was the right thing to do for the ending of a trilogy that you were building up to because the focus of this film is not Michael Myers not really um, is not really Laurie Strode's character but a whole but a completely brand new character uh, that goes by the name of Corey that's introduced in this movie so I think maybe if Corey was introduced in either the Halloween 2018, which is where we started this new trilogy, or in the, the second one, or if he, maybe he just kind of had his arc built throughout the movies, it would be something. Um, but but, but some, some good ideas for sure. Um, and, and since I brought up plot elements of the past films, uh, spoilers for the new movie. Um, so if you, uh, don't want spoilers for this newest film, go watch it, come back, you can pick up where you left off. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm just gonna talk about it. So, Corey, the, the, the start of this movie, uh, there's like a four-year time skip between this and Halloween Kills, and Lori's kind of moved on with her life, or has tried to move on, Michael has vanished, no one knows where he is, um, and people seem to be kind of okay with that, which is weird, uh, especially Lori, uh, like, like, the townspeople are like, every, every murder that happens in town, everyone's like, is Michael back? Is he back? Did he come back? And, like, no, I don't think so, this doesn't feel like a Michael Myers murder. But Lori Strode seems to be perfectly fine somehow, despite being paranoid for 40 years um, for Michael to come back in the first place. And then in Halloween Kills, uh, her daughter gets murdered at the end. But somehow, in the course of only four years, um, she has uh, moved on. And doesn't somehow wake up in a cold sweat every night thinking that Michael's going to show up on her doorstep because she doesn't know where he is. No one knows where he is. He's not in prison this time. He's not like... Like he's out there. He's out there in the wild somewhere and no one knows where he is. Or why he disappeared. And I'm going to tell you right now, all Michael's been doing this whole time is been chilling in a sewer. Which is fine. I mean, you know, My Michael has had uh, sewer bases before. But... He just apparently... I guess, um, unless you just stumble 
upon his sewer. I think that's like the only time he's maybe killed people. But he's apparently basically stopped killing. He's just kind of gone to this sewer for the past four years and is just, I guess, rotting away. Um, which is very strange, especially considering the bit of supernatural lore they do play with Michael in this trilogy is that every time Michael kills someone that basically re-energizes him, that gives him his, his power back, effectively. So if that's how Michael Myers works, I don't know why he stopped for four years and basically became a dysfunctional, just zombie person who can be pushed around by a young adult being Cory sometimes, just be just be manhandled so easily until he starts killing again um with Corey's help because Corey due to a babysitting accident he was involved with is kind of seen as the new boogeyman a new a new person for the town to kind of just hate on um for a genuine accident but he gets bullied all the time and he just doesn't have a good life because no one treats him well. Um, so he slowly, over the course of the film, you know, he finally snaps and starts killing people. But he finds Michael Myers and the two kind of have some weird, like, bond that they form in killing and so they kind of feed off each other or Corey goes around and he kills people and Michael follows him and Michael will kill people and he'll kind of get this like actual physical like whoa <laughs> like okay he's getting his mojo back so yeah so 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 some interesting concepts in this movie but everyone, this movie was marketed as the final Laurie Strode and Michael throw, like, throwdown. Like, this was it. This was the finale. This was the end-all, be-all fight between Michael and Laurie Strode. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but it is for now. Um, but most of the movie is dedicated to Corey's story, which, in a vacuum, in a bubble, as its own story, isn't really a bad thing. But it kind of stumbles... And just, it just eats up so much of the movie. Michael's barely in it. Um, Lori Strode's character's in a weird place um, for everything she's been through up to this point. Um, it ends off well enough for her, so I guess there's that. Um, and they do kill Michael Myers. Uh, they at least destroy the body in this movie. Um, at the end, when Corey's dealt with... Michael Myers comes back onto the scene, and Laurie and Michael do have their final fight, though it wasn't really built up to, it just happens. But it's a cool little fight, isn't as long, I, w I wanted it to be longer, I guess. Um, but uh, they have a cool little fight, she beats him, uh, just barely. <laughs> um, but they end up strapping his body to the roof of their car, and driving it to the junkyard with, like, the whole town following them. And they put his body in, like, a metal grinder. And you just watch his body get crushed up in the machine. And you're like, well, he's definitely dead. Um, but, yeah, so that's Halloween ends. Um, it's not perfect. It's not the ending I, you know, really, you know, wanted. But for the movie we got, it's interesting, and there's stuff that works, but I think it um, definitely stumbles uh, quite a lot. So, <laughs> Halloween's in talk over. Um, moving on after that, <laughs> I would say next up is probably... Uh, Halloween Kills. Yeah, so Halloween Kills, the movie before ends. Second movie in this this new trilogy. Um, Halloween Kills is definitely Michael Myers' movie. If you want 
to see a movie where Michael Myers just kills a bunch of people, this is the movie for you. Um, so it's definitely more like a thriller. It, like, 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 here's the thing. I'm not a huge horror movie person. Like, I'm not that into horror movies or slasher films or anything. But the one series I did get attached to, overall, is the Halloween series. Because I was never really... Like, they never scared me. So it wasn't a horror aspect. Like, I've always seen the Halloween movies as, like, a thriller. Like, they're a, they're a horror thriller film. And... It's just like, yeah, like, Michael... Like, he, he has... He definitely has creepy moments. And, and parts where he comes out. And you're like, yeah, that's pretty... That's pretty scary. But, like... It, it was never, like, a horror thing for me with the Halloween series. I've always liked them because they feel like more of a thriller, like a suspense. And I've, I've always really liked that about them. And so Halloween Kills is definitely, like, a thriller film. <laughs> In terms of just a good old slasher good time. But overall, uh, I think the dialogue um, is pretty not good <laughs> like the dialogue is very dramatic it's very over the top and uh just evil dies tonight that that's like the one line if 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 if, if you ask someone about halloween kills one of the things they'll probably say is evil dies tonight like that's the main thing people say and it's pretty silly um yeah, there's there's a lot of like weird, like deep philosophical tops about evil and fear and how it affects society, and it's kind of cringy, <laughs> just for how long it goes on for, uh, and just most most of the dialogue is just there. There is some good silly dialogue, but this is probably some of the worst dialogue <laughs> in the series. But I honestly think the Michael stuff. Um, is what props it up. Um, so that, so that kind of saves, that saves the film quite a lot. So after that, <laughs> um, we have Halloween Resurrection. Now, when I first saw this movie, I hated it. I thought it, I thought it crapped all over the Halloween franchise, and to a lot of people... I know that's I know this is a controversy thing, but this is my opinion. To a lot of people, that's still how Halloween Resurrection is looked at. Because it takes the ending of Halloween H two O, which to a lot of people was a great send off, a great ending between Michael and Lori's story, and craps all over it. Because apparently the person Lori chopped the head off of was some paramedic guy that Michael earlier swapped costumes with and crushed his like vocal cords or something like he did like he made he did something like the dude couldn't talk so he couldn't say hey I'm not Michael and <laughs> so Lori killed the wrong person and she was admitted to a psychiatric a psychiatric ward Jesus Christ I can't talk um where she stayed, Michael comes for her, and she dies. Michael kills her, and she's dead. And so to a lot of people, that, this is the very beginning of the movie, by the way. Like, that's the very beginning of Halloween Resurrection, is Lori dies. Michael comes, she dies. And that, to a lot of people, just right there on its own, is just felt like a betrayal and I can understand that because that's that's kind of how it felt at the time too when I first watched it and then the rest of the movie because <laughs> um, it was made at the time like found footage was becoming popular so it was kind of played up as a found footage like uh, they they set up a lot of cameras around the Michael Myers house and it's like this big like web 
like internet show thing and it's like ooh if you can survive the night in Michael's house you'll win a lot of money or something um so it was kind of set up like that it was a big like game show um but upon rewatching the film not too long ago uh for context I don't care about the Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street or like I don't really like any of the other slasher movies all that much um, but one that does stand out to me is Jason X, and Jason X, where Jason Voorhees goes to outer space and is, like, killing people on, like, a spaceship is just so wacky and silly. I love it. <laughs> so upon re-watching this film, I was like, this kind of reminds me of Jason X. Michael's not in outer space or anything, but the film, I feel, is... It feels more aware of how silly it is um, than it's just, it's so bad it's good, in my mind. Or maybe it is, it's just so bad it's good. It could be either or, it could be a little both. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty wacky. And, like, you have... <laughs> you have Buster Rhymes in this movie who who defeats Michael Myers with karate. And it's, like, the most hilarious thing in the world every time those two square up. It, it's just, it's such a wacky, silly movie. Um, I definitely, I definitely recommend it if you just want, like, a silly Michael Myers Halloween film. Um, and just, just see, ju judge it for yourself, or maybe give it a, a, a another shot. Because at this point, I think it's one of the, the best Halloween movies, just for how wacky it is. So, moving on. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure we're in the top two now. We're not. We're in the top three. <laughs> because I forgot about Halloween 2. The original Halloween 2. Um... So yeah, we'll go ahead and put the original Halloween 2 next. Halloween the the OG Halloween 2 is number 3. Um or it's just it's it's just a straight continuation uh from the original film. Um picks up right where that movie leaves off. Um and Laurie's admitted to the hospital. Michael has disappeared. Uh he ends up learning that she's at the hospital, follows her to the hospital and this movie is very similar to Kills in the sense of Michael gets a lot of kills in this movie. Um, in a lot of different gruesome ways. It was definitely a lot bloodier. Because I don't think the first... I don't think the original movie had any blood. It might have had like a little bit, but not a lot. Um, but yeah, like overall, the original Halloween 2, it's, uh, it's pretty It's pretty solid. I don't have really any complaints with it. Uh, Michael Michael Myers feels a bit more robotic. Like his movements are, are a bit more stiff, I think, uh, than in other movies. But, I mean, overall, it's uh, it's pretty solid. So, Halloween 2. Um, now, top two. Number two, I'm going to give to Halloween 2018, which is the first... Halloween film in this latest trilogy. It's just called Halloween, but everyone calls it Halloween 2018. Um, but it, it does play as a sequel to the original movie. So it doesn't count Halloween 2 at all. Halloween 2018 is the new Halloween 2. Very confusing, I know, but that's just how the naming stuff works now. So, that being said... I feel like Halloween 2018 is probably the closest we come to a really good sequel, like comeback for the Halloween franchise after so long. Um, actually, nope, scratch that. We are now in the top three. I keep forgetting about certain films. No. Absolutely. Number three. So Halloween 2 is number four. <laughs> number three 
is Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. So everything I just said <laughs> about Halloween 2018 is still relevant, but we'll get back to that. Halloween 4, The, the Return of Michael Myers, um, is basically the result of, okay, we can't do this anthology series like we thought anymore, so we're going to bring Michael Myers back. And so, The Return of Michael Myers is a sequel to Halloween 2. So, it's just Halloween 3 with Michael Myers. <laughs> I know, still confusing, probably. But, uh, but yeah, so, like, Michael escapes the ambulance he was put into after he effectively burned to death at the end of Halloween 2, and escapes... For whatever reason, though, Laurie Strode's not in this movie. Because I think it's it's sometime later. Like, it's sometime, like, there's a time skip. And I think Laurie Strode's character either died off screen, or she just moved away. I don't remember. I think she might have died off screen. <laughs> because Michael has different family members to hunt in Halloween 4, uh, being his niece. Yes, he has a niece he's going after now. Um, and so that's fun. But Halloween 4, I feel like, is definitely, before Halloween 2018 came out, Halloween 4 was my favorite sequel to the original Halloween movie. Um, the mask isn't perfect, but... Somehow, it's also, like, the most emotion. Like, it doesn't have... Like, it has less emotion. Like, it's so much more of a blank... face. <laughs> Which is weird to say, because... All of Michael Myers' masks... Are just white masks. But this one, somehow... Is just, like, so blank. So lifeless. It's scarier. Almost. In, in, in a good way. So I like that. And I just I just think what they do with Michael in, in Halloween 4 is really good. They bring Dr. Loomis back. Because he supposedly died in the fire with Michael. But they're like, fuck it, we're just going to bring everyone back besides Laurie Strode. Um, but yeah, so it, it, go, it starts becoming about his niece. And he's hunting his niece down. And, uh, obviously everyone's surrounding her, um, like her adopted older sister and everything. And that movie basically ends with, uh, Michael getting, like, shot by, like, the entire police force. <laughs> no one aims for his head, though, unfortunately. They all just aim for his chest, but they, they just, like, blow him away with shotguns and pistols and rifles and all this stuff. And he falls into, like, an old mine shaft. And they light TNT and they throw it down the mine shaft and blow it up. And that was just awesome. <laughs> but Michael gets a lot of good kills in this movie too. And it's all great. Um, again, because Halloween 5, the revenge of Michael Myers exists. That kind of craps on this ending too. Because Michael just somehow escaped the mine shaft before it got blown up. And it's just really dumb. <laughs> but Halloween 4, solid, solid, solid. Now we get back <laughs> to number 2, <laughs> being Halloween 2018. Um, Halloween 2018 is still definitively my favorite sequel to the original Halloween. Um, and I feel like it actually serves as a good standalone film, just a good standalone with an ending as well. A standalone sequel with a good ending to where you can just like ignore kills, ignore ends, um, and just be like, yeah, like this, this is, this is a great sequel, um, with a definitive enough ending, but still ambiguous enough to where it's like, yeah, Michael could be alive, but may, probably not. Um, but yeah, I'm like, so, with using the original movie 
as the foundation. Michael got arrested. He gets put in prison for 40 years. Uh, Lori has tried to live a normal life, but she just can't. She's been very traumatized from the events back then. Um, and so she is, you know, she's gotten into guns. She's been training. She has, like, a shooting range, and she's, like, all badass now, like Sarah Connor or something. Um, it might be a bit too much. It might be, be it might be a bit too much of a character shift for her for some people, which I understand. But I think it serves the movie well. Um, and she, she drinks a lot, and she's just like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Michael to one day escape prison so she can kill him herself. And long and behold, while Michael's being transferred to another prison, um, he somehow escapes. And Lori's like, I knew it. I knew he was going to get out, so I'm ready. And so Michael is going around town, killing a bunch of people. A lot of great scenes there. Um, Lori Strode does have a daughter and a granddaughter in this movie. And they obviously have their own run-in with Michael Myers. And it all eventually leads back to Lori's, like, house out in the middle of nowhere. And Michael shows up. And Lori has basically booby-trapped her house for Michael. Like, her house is just built to help her combat Michael. So they have a better fight in 2018, I think, overall, than Halloween Ends. And it's a more satisfying ending in my mind, too. Um, but Lori's, like, she's she's kind of, like, she knows all the all the horror movie tropes. Like, so she's, she's, like, closing off rooms and stuff with, like, these metal, like, gates she's installed on, on each of the doors. She's, like, closing off every room she's clearing when he's not in it. So he can't, like, disappear in there or anything. And has, like, a cool, like, little underground, like, like a armored up basement and stuff and it all leads to her trapping Michael Myers in the basement and where he can't get out and she has the place rigged with all these like gas things and burns the house down with him in it so again kind of going back to Halloween 2 where she tried to burn him alive um but this time, you know, you, you think it might work. But the movie did really well, made a shit ton of money, so they ended up making two more movies, and whatever. But <laughs> a very, very good movie, 2018. It's It's got some silly dialogue, too. It has some scenes that kind of um, are just kind of blah. But I think overall it is still my favorite sequel to the original film. So, number one, if we couldn't guess is the original Halloween movie. I mean, it is a legitimate classic. It basically started the slasher genre. Um, it's a very simple, very simple movie made on a very small budget. Because um, Laurie, Laurie Strode is just a babysitter and Michael escapes the asylum he was in, that he was put in as a child, um, which we get the impression from this movie that Michael Myers uh, lived with a normal family, had a, had, a, like, had a normal childhood, and then just one day, he, he just for some reason, he snapped and killed his older sister. That's all the buildup we have for Michael. That's all we need for Michael. Is just, and I think, I honestly think that's scarier. S for some reason, somehow, this, what you would consider to be a normal kid living in a normal home, snaps. For some reason. And just kills his older sister. Gets sent to an asylum where Dr. Loomis has been his doctor for all the time he's been there. Like the 20 years or so he's been there. And he escapes. Goes back to the town. And kills a couple people. And, 
you know, he, he just, he locks his sights on Laurie Strode and her friends. And so he just starts killing them. Like, he doesn't, there's not a lot of people that die in this movie. But he's like, he's very specific about who he's going after. And Michael has always had kind of a funny... He likes to kind of be, like, artistic with some of his murders. Or, like, you know, kind of creative. He's he's kind of playful, like a child, in a sense. Um, with how he... Not necessarily how he murders people all the time. I mean, he is sometimes. Like, there's, there's just, like, one of the kills in the original film is he staples a dude to a wall with his knife, which is physically impossible. And he just kind of stands there and tilts his head and looks at it like it's a work of art. Or uh, he kills one of Lori's friends and displays her body on a bed with a tombstone that he stole. That, uh, his, his sister's tombstone that he stole from the graveyard nearby um, with a jack lantern. And it's just like, yeah, Michael likes to not only be creative with his kills to some degree... But he likes to display his kills in a more creative fashion most of the time. Sometimes he just kills someone and moves on. That's just all there is to it. But if he has time, and if he wants to, he'll get creative with his displays. Um, so it's the, there's just some mystery there, and just like... It's, it's very cool, and a lot of build-up and suspense for how they handle... Uh, him stalking his victims and eventually, you know, killing most of them, besides Laurie Strode. Um, but yeah, like, there's there's nothing beats the classic, and I don't think anything needs to. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, so I appreciate you, uh, you know, <laughs> making it all this way, if you've listened to me ramble on all this time. I really appreciate that. If you made it this far, hashtag Halloween in the comments. I'd really, uh, I'd really appreciate that, guys. Uh, I think we're going to have another video uh, in the near future. Um, I can't give you an exact time frame, but maybe within the next week or two. Uh, definitely, definitely probably before Halloween. So, this... More than likely, by the end of this week, this next week coming up, there'll be another video. Um, at least that's what I'm hoping. If not, oh well, but I'm planning on doing another video within the week, hopefully. Um, if not, the week after that. So, thank you guys. I love you. We're still here. We're still strong. Stay tuned. Thank <laughs> you.